Hello everyone! Welcome to a video from a possible future womb series, and also part of the It Hurts series. In the poll, you voted mostly for number 2, under which was hiding shortness of breath. Enjoy! Special thanks to my lovely patrons, you are keeping this channel going. As much as Kiltani didn't like the idea at first, he had to admit Yahaba was holding up quite well this time around. He wasn't sure why his fiancé was so adamant about going on a hiking vacation when they could comfortably spend the free time they had before their wedding anywhere else beside the mountains. Still, his heart was too soft to tell Yahaba no, and so they soon found themselves looking up the best hiking trails in Miyagi Prefecture. Now, he still had Yahaba's accident from the last time they went hiking in vivid memory, and he definitely wasn't going to let it happen again. Enough blood was shed that day, and he refused to see Yahaba injured again. Yahaba made an occasional remark about it during the ride to their accommodation, but the phone's twinkle in his eyes let Kyotani know he didn't need to take it to heart. But that didn't mean he stopped worrying or watching out for any potential danger for Yahaba, as they slowly walked through the shade of the forest, with Bruno making wide circles around them. A gentle nudge to his side interrupted his thoughts. Stop frowning so much, you'll get wrinkles. Kyotani grumbled under his breath, but put some effort into relaxing his face, much to Yahaba's amusement. I would say you are adorable, but for that you can't be so grumpy all the time. Come on, it's our vacation. I thought you are supposed to be enjoying vacations. I'm just being careful. Ken, it's been three years already. Don't you have any faith in my condition? Get on his side, subconsciously searching for Yahaba's hand. It's not about that, Shige. I just don't want you to get hurt again. You have no idea how scared I was back then. I thought... When I saw all the blood... He fell silent, unable to continue. He never said it out loud, but seeing Yahaba on the ground with blood dripping on the rocks under him... He thought his then still boyfriend cracked his skull. Things weren't the same since then. As much as he loved nature and hiking, he hadn't proposed another trip for the whole of three years. It was a sacrifice he was willing to make if it meant Yahaba was fine. Nothing else mattered to him more. He didn't even notice they stopped until Yahaba entwined their fingers together before hugging his arm and laying his head on his shoulder. Ken, it was an accident. I know you want to protect me, but I don't need to be wrapped in a bubble wrap whenever I go outside. I want you to enjoy this too, that's why I suggested it. But... No buts. A little pout settled on Yahaba's lips as he gently punched Kyotani's chest. Don't think I didn't notice you are holding back because of me. How long has it been since we went somewhere you wanted to go, huh? I don't know. Well, I do. Three years. You've been accommodating me for three years, and I hate it. Shige. I know, I know. I'm grateful you are keeping me safe. I really am. I couldn't ask for more than that. But you can be selfish too sometimes, you know? He gave Kyotani one of his knee-weakening soft smiles. I want you to be happy too. That's what marriage is supposed to be about, right? Kyotani stared at him for a silent moment unable to find a solid counter-argument. But he would lie if he said he wasn't moved, a wave of fondness washing over him when a smile of his own grew on his lips. He leaned in to bring their lips together, relishing the little surprised hum Yahaba let out. Thanks, love. You are the best. Yahaba blushed. You are saying that? Still, he leaned for another kiss before stepping away though he left their fingers intertwined. Seriously, though, you don't have to give up on things you like because of me. That's not what I want. I'll tell you if something gets too much for me. And even then, I'll cheer you on from afar. Got it? Kyotani smiled at him, bringing their hands to his lips to leave a kiss on Yahaba's delicate fingers, his heart fluttering when he recalled that not even three months from now he was going to be able to kiss a new ring. The day really couldn't come fast enough. Got it. Good. Now come on, or Bruno will make a new hole under him. 
As if he understood his words, Bruno barked and spun around in one place before expectantly turning to them, his tail wagging wildly. Kyotani snorted a short laugh and pulled Yahaba to his side, close enough to still feel the warmth they shared between them, but not too close to obstruct his movement. They still had a solid part of the way ahead of them, after all. How far is it? Yatani rolled his eyes in a loving exasperation and reached his hand to Yahaba to help him over the last few routes standing in his way. Taught by past experience, he didn't let there be more than one meter distance between him and Yahaba at any time, always waiting for him when he started to fall behind or needed a break. Having Bruno with them helped too, as the pub was constantly running around them, alerting Kyotani whenever something didn't seem right. It should just be around that curve over there. Having, Yahab adjusted the backpack on his back, the determination settling on his face making Kyotani smile. He kept their hands connected as there wasn't any hill in front of them and continued on, taking note of the slight waver in Yahaba's step. Everything okay? Yahaba stopped, taking a few deep breaths before joining Kyotani by his side. Yeah, don't worry. My legs just hurt a bit. Do you want me to carry you? A light pink tint spread fast over Yahaba's cheeks. Of course not. I can manage the last few meters. Just... Let me catch my breath a bit. The last part was horrible. He took a while to breathe, while Kyotani whistled at Bruno to come back to them. It's fine. Take it slow. He removed a stray strand of hair from Yahaba's forehead, feeling a laugh-struck smile making its way to his face. You are doing great. Yahaba elbowed him lightly into the ribs, but the light flush on his cheeks told Kyotani everything he needed to know. Keep the praises for when we actually get to the viewpoint. I hope it's worth it. Definitely. This one should be the prettiest around here. Yahaba seemed to rejoice at that. He straightened and readjusted the backpack straps before tugging on Kyotani's hand. Well then, what are we waiting for? Let's go! Kyotani decided not to comment on the fact he was waiting for him to be ready to continue and followed close behind Yahaba, lightly swinging their connected hands between them. Then, finally, the trees opened in front of them, showing them exactly what they came for. Yahaba squealed like a little kid and despite being tired just a few minutes ago, ran to the railings at the viewpoint with Bruno on his heels, swaying back and forth on his feet in excitement. You were right! It's even better than the pictures! Kyotani chuckled and followed after him a bit more slowly, shaking off his backpack on a nearby bench before he joined Yahaba by the railing. The view was truly breathtaking. Mountains, forest, and a valley with a small lake they were planning to go the next day. They could see everything and even more, basking in the early evening sun. But nothing compared to the sight of Ehaba's smile when he hugged Kyotani's arm and laid his head on his shoulder, the sun creating a golden halo around his head. He still preferred the moon, especially when it shone into Yahaba's hair, but for that moment he was content with his personal sun. Can I praise you now? Go ahead. Pressing a short kiss to his forehead, Kyotani wrapped his arm around Yahaba's waist, Fond memories of his proposal entering his mind. You did great. I'm proud of you. He paused and then nuzzled into Yahaba's hair, whispering. Thank you. Hmm? For what? For coming here with me, even though you don't like hiking. He could feel Yahaba's arms around him tightening. Of course. I told you that you deserve to be happy too. This is the least I can do for you. He pulled away a bit, his cheeks colored with the lovely shade of pink Yotani loved to see, his eyes almost sparkling. Let's sit down for a while, I don't want to go back yet. Do we still have some snacks? Smiling, Kyotani sat on the bench and pulled Yahaba onto his lap, handing him the backpack. He nestled into the crook of his neck while Yahaba rummaged through the backpack, holding him as close as humanly possible, suddenly unable to let go even a bit. Judging by the soft chuckle, Yahaba didn't seem to mind and only tapped on his head to feed him an apple, piece by piece, before they moved to the sandwiches. 
But even then, Kyotani didn't let go, relishing the contact and cradling Kyahaba like the treasure he was, as the sun slowly settled behind them. Do we really have to go out again? Kyotani rolled his eyes and lightly pushed Kyahaba forward towards their car, grabbing a shopping bag in the process. Unless you want to be without breakfast or wake up at seven to go shopping tomorrow, yes, we do. Ihaba grumbled under his breath, but the threat of having to get up early during their vacation was apparently enough to make him move. Kiotani had to smile. Ihaba had his quirks, many of which were among the reasons why he fell for the man in the first place. But sometimes it was so incredibly easy to manipulate him into doing whatever needed to be done. Food and lazy mornings were Kiotani's main weapons. Death and cuddles, of course. You didn't have to drag me along, you know? My legs still hurt. It's not just my breakfast, is it? And besides, if you lay down now, it's going to hurt much more tomorrow. It's better to walk to let the muscles stretch naturally. We've been walking for the past three days. We've been hiking. This is just a trip from a parking lot into a shop and back. Nothing horrible. With a small pout forming on his lips, Yahaba finally settled in the passenger seat his arms crossed over his chest. How comes Bruno can stay here sleeping and I can't? Are you seriously jealous of our dog? And? Every pet owner I know gets jealous of their pet's life once in a while. Kiotani snorted a short laugh and started the car, backing out of the driveway. We'll be back in a few minutes, then you can lazy around as much as you want. He glanced at Yahaba and furrowed his brow. Fasten your seatbelt. Why? It's just a few minutes. Because. You never know what can happen. Fasten it. With a roll of his eyes, Yahaba did as he was told, reminding Kyotani of a little kid. But at least he listened. The curvy road led them through the forest and in between the smaller hills, offering a nice scenery to look at even from the ground. One glance beside him told Kyotani Yahaba felt the same the previous spout turning into a soft smile. It was a truly enchanting sight, an unprecedented one indeed. And even though it was nowhere near as rare as during the harsher times throughout the last year, Kyotani still refused to take it for granted. We should do more trips like this. Yahaba's smile widened as he turned to him, but before he could say anything, a flash of something appearing from behind the curve in the rearview mirror caught Kyotani's attention. In a split second, the screeching of tires sounded from behind, and then they were flung forward. Scraping of metal against metal and the glass shattering drowned out every other sound. Kyotani's mind blacked out for a moment, a sharp pain shooting through his neck and chest, briefly knocking the air out of his lungs. He coughed and shook his head to clear his mind, immediately regretting it as another wave of pain shot down his spine. Groaning, he leaned his head on the steering wheel to make the world stop spinning with him, for a split second wondering how he was able to lean so forward before his mind was flooded with completely different thoughts. Shige? He let out a relieved breath when he heard a light cough from beside him. Yeah. You okay? I... I think... yes. Kyotani forced his body to move and sat up, hissing and groaning in pain, but it was nothing against seeing Yahaba conscious and mostly unscathed, except for his white eyes and wildly heaving chest. He reached for his arm, squeezing his forearm in a subconscious need to make sure he wasn't dreaming. Are you hurt? Yahaba's face scrunched as he shook his head, his visibly trembling hands straying to the back of his neck. My neck hurts. Anything else? Probably not. What... what happened? I don't know. But we should move. Can you open the door? With the utmost effort, moving purely on sheer willpower, they both slowly stumbled out of the car. Kyotanes had spun, but he still made an immediate beeline to Yahaba to make sure everything was alright. That his fiancé was alright. Pain shot through his chest when he pulled Yahaba to him, but at that moment, 
he thought about anything but that. That was scary. Yeah, then he had to agree. The back of their car was completely destroyed. The metal and plastic scrunched together like paper. The other car didn't look much better, and neither did the driver, who, judging by the sounds, just crawled out too. Thank goodness for the seatbelt, huh? Yahaba's eyes were still blown wide, his voice hitched, but Kyotani couldn't blame him. He cupped Yahaba's cheeks, leaning their foreheads together. Can you call the police? And ambulance. I'll go check that other idiot. Okay, yeah. Be careful. Are you sure you don't need them to check you up? Kyotani hummed quietly, leaning on the side of the ambulance car while the emergency doctor tended to Yahaba's whiplash and cut hand. Your partner is right. You could be injured too, especially since your seatbelt malfunctioned in the worst possible moment. I'm fine. Focus on him. Ken. Seriously, I'm good. He squeezed Yahaba's hand, giving him what he hoped was a reassuring smile. Don't worry about me, okay? There is no need. That doesn't make me feel better. I'm fine, Shige. Just my head hurts, but I can move around just fine and I don't have anything broken either. Yahaba didn't look convinced, and neither did the doctor. Yotane couldn't really blame them. After all, they were just in a pretty serious car crash. But he wasn't lying either. His head was killing him and he had to be careful about not taking too deep breaths. But otherwise, he was fine. He just finished explaining everything to the police officer sent to the scene, and he had to hold back a lot not to bite the head off of the idiot who slumped into them, and who of course got out without a single scrape. Drunkards really were unfairly lucky sometimes. Ken? He snapped out of his thoughts, his face softening as he entwined their fingers together. Sorry, what did you say? I'm finished with the checkup. Your partner should be alright if he gets enough rest in the next two weeks. But you should keep an eye on him because of the whiplash. If anything starts hurting, seek medical help immediately. He gave Kyotani a reprimanding look. That goes for you too. I can't force you to get examined, but remember that car crashes are no joke. Note taken. Alright then, please sign me this and then you are free to go. You should have let him check on you too. Kyotani sighed, barely containing the winds when he took in too much air and removed a stray strand from Yahaba's forehead, leaving a light kiss on it. Shige, I promise I'm fine. He took hold of his hand and gently tugged him towards one of the police officers who offered them a ride back to their rented cabin. Let's get back. You heard the doctor. You should rest. We. We should rest. Yeah, I know. As if feeling something bad had happened, Bruno was waiting for them by the door, whining and wriggling around their legs immediately after they opened it. Relief washed over Kyotani as he scratched the pub behind his ears. Thank goodness Bruno was sleepy this time. Yahaba didn't have to say anything. His expression and the way he dug his fingers into Bruno's fur when he got down to hug him spoke amounts. They got lucky with a lot of things that day. Slowly, they moved to the small living room. Kyotani almost collapsed on the couch with a flinch, even the short way from the driveway taking a strange toll on him. He signed it off as relief for being back in the cabin and waved off the Abba's concerned gaze. It's fine. Are you sure? You look breathless. Kyotani paused. Now that Yahaba said it, he could feel a slight burning in his lungs with each of the short breaths he took. That's just the adrenaline rush going away. Nothing serious. Ken, this is not something you should take lightly. I'm not, I promise. I'm completely serious. He reached over the back of the couch to capture Yahaba's hand, leaving a light kiss on his fingers. You don't have to worry about me so much. Yahaba sighed, not looking even a little bit convinced. He squeezed Kyotani's hand almost desperately. Do you promise me you would tell me if something was wrong? I would, I promise. Okay, I... 
I'll go take a shower. I feel like I still smell of metal. Do you want me to keep an eye on you? In case you got sick or something. Yahaba shook his head lightly, even cracking a barely visible smile. No, but you can join me later if you want. Returning the smile, Kyotani squeezed his hand back before letting go, following Yahaba with his gaze until he disappeared into the bathroom. He let out a deep sigh and slumped into the couch, wincing when his chest got ignited on fire. His head spun, slowly starting to feel a bit too light for his comfort. It's fine, just need to take a few deep breaths. However, that proved to be an issue in itself. Even when he pushed through the pain to the point where it didn't allow him to continue and get more air into his lungs, it still felt like he just finished his running workout. The faint sounds of the shower running somewhere behind him disappeared as his ears popped softly, muffling all sounds except for his short, wheezy breathing. He forced himself to take a deep breath to settle his rapid heartbeat, but the pain paralyzed his chest, his lungs as if refusing to work. Fuck. Hurts. He cursed inwardly as the surge of coughing shook with his body, every movement hurting like all hell, his vision getting slightly hazy. Something wet nudged his hand. He gritted his teeth and dug his fingers into Bruno's soft fur, and he could swear Bruno's half sounded worried. It's fine. His own voice sounded alien to his ears, the words making his skin crawl, because at that point he knew it was a lie. Swallowing his pride, he pushed against the scorching pain in his chest and sat up. Shige! Shige! No answer. Of course not, as if he could hear me over the water. In despair, he tried to push himself up from the couch and on his wobbly legs. He had to grip the armrest for support, even that little movement rendering him completely breathless. Shige! A slender body swished around his legs, and then sharp barking and scratching of claws against wood pierced his clogged ears. Good boy, so smart. He didn't get to praise Bruno for long, though, as another fit of coughing pushed even the remaining air out of his lungs, the tremors feeling like his chest was being pierced by hundred knives. The wheezing got even worse, and he froze when he spotted tiny droplets of blood on his palm. A thought flashed through his mind. What a stupid way to die. Then a strained voice reached his ears, soon followed by hands laid on his biceps. Ken? What's wrong? Tell me what's wrong. Breathe. Can't. He couldn't continue, the cuffs cutting his words short. But apparently it was enough for Yahaba to understand. You can't breathe? Okay, okay, sit down. I'll call the ambulance. He pushed Kyotani back on the couch and rushed away, calling at him to not move. As if he could. As if he could even take a proper breath. The ride by the ambulance was a complete blur. He was conscious, and yet, when he tried to focus on details, he couldn't. At least now, with the oxygen tube stuck into his nose and the painkillers flowing in his blood, he could breathe better. Yahaba didn't move away from his bed for more than a few seconds at a time, oscillating between scolding him for being stupid and fussing over him whenever he just about winced. The familiarity of it calmed Kyotani down, as did the ever-present warm grip on his hand. Even before the painkillers kicked in and every breath felt like needles jabbing into his lungs, Yahaba's hand was there to ground him, and Kyotani couldn't be more careful for that. He just wished he could move properly to wipe the glistening tears now running down Yahaba's cheeks. You are such an idiot, you know that? You promised me you will tell me if something was wrong. You promised. Kyotane sighed, careful about his breathing. I'm sorry, love. I swear I didn't know that it was this bad. Doesn't change anything. Why don't you ever listen to me? This didn't have to happen if you weren't a stubborn donkey. Ouch? Yeah, ouch. You deserve much worse. What if Bruno didn't alert me? You should be thanking all gods we have such a smart dog. 
yet Annie couldn't help the smile forming on his lips. I already thanked. And I thanked for you too. Yahaba paused, a light blush appearing on his cheeks as he turned his head away. Good. At least something. They both turned their heads to the door when a doctor came in, a thin file in her hands. Don't be alarmed, I'm here to check on the patient. How is your breathing? Much better than an hour ago, that's for sure. The doctor smiled and checked the file. That's good news. I also have the results of the X-ray and the first test we ran. Yahaba visibly tensed. Yotane gave his hand a little squeeze, brushing his stump over his knuckles, which seemed to relax him a bit. Is it something bad? That depends. Based on the CT scans and oxygen levels and judging by what you told me, the cause is most definitely a pulmonary contusion. In layman's terms, bruised lungs. It probably happened when you hit the steering wheel during the crash. The X-ray didn't show any fractures on the ribs, which is good. But you still got lucky your partner got you to hospital in time. The lung tissue is really sensitive and any liquid gathering in lungs is bad news. You'll have to follow several rules and most importantly rest. But since we managed to catch it early, we can start the treatment immediately and there shouldn't be any lasting effects. Yahaba bit his lip, more tears spilling from his eyes. But Kyotane couldn't really blame him, a wave of relief washing over him as well. You are lucky, it's just that. Kyotane caressed the back of Yahaba's hand, sending yet another silent thank you to any deity that was keeping an eye on him. On them. Idiots really are lucky, huh? A smile tucked in the corner of Yehaba's mouth. He dried his eyes. Yeah, they are.